on TV, on radio, and on your smartphone. This is Talk TV. Now, if you thought we spent too much time on foreign aid, a uh, new revelations show that a quarter of the budget is not going on any actual worthy foreign developments, but has been used instead on the migrant hotel programme. This scandal, which has crippled the hospitality business for years now, uh, cost us alone about £4.3 billion. And with total migration already higher at this point of the year since the boat started coming, it looks like the spending is only going to go up and up and up. I'd like to introduce my panel for tonight, journalist and broadcaster Sam Dowler, political commentator Reem Ibrahim, and barrister and broadcaster Andrew Eborn. <laughs> Such a ham, isn't he? <laughs> I mean, absolutely. <laughs> how, did, how, did, how did he get his own theme tune? <laughs> <It's good. laughs> I mean, he does a lot of talking behind the scenes, you know. I can't, it's true. It's I true. can't help you. Anyway, listen, welcome to all of you. Uh, we've only got two years left, so just make the most of it. Is my, uh, well, we'll be explaining later why the UN's latest climate craze um, is now uh, being put into force. Apparently, despite the fact that we've reduced our climate emissions by 50%, it's not yes. enough. You know, so we're all going to die anyway. So I, there we are. But let's talk about this money business because, you know, the, the, the Rwanda word hasn't been mentioned yet. Nobody's gone there. Uh, we're now offering people three grand a time to go there if they'd like to go. <laughs> um, we're now spending millions and billions of pounds. People are being housed now permanently. We learned only yesterday, I think, that all the people who fail their asylum seeker uh, status don't ever go away anyway. They just stay here. Yeah. This is money that they could have saved had they had the process in, you know, in mm. in place right. to deal with these immigrants yes. and, and to make and, and to and to actually sort them out. But no, no, give them, give put, put, put them in a nice hotel. 25 percent right. of like our entire, I mean, the entire budget. Mm. Is it, 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 it is crazy, and the scandal is they classified yeah. as overseas aid when the reality right. is it's what forty three of a four point three billion, twenty eight percent of the total budget yes. is crazy. The other side of the thing, there's a brilliant film at the moment called Il Capitan. Or Il Capitano, which shows <laughs> actually the, the, the migrant side of it, which is the horrendous torture, the who's murder, the blackmail. Oh, wow. I've seen it, I've seen the thing. Well, and it shows their yeah, who's made it? Over. Who's, yeah. who's made the film? Um, I'm not sure, but it was, it's, it's up for all sorts of awards. Go right. and have a look at it. What I would say, the people we need to, to, to deal with are the people traffickers. That's the abhorrent trade in all they're this. They're the criminals, and they're, you know, obviously they're the ones that we've got to compete against, right? Effectively, right. we need to have those safe and legal routes in order to compete with them. But actually, what's really interesting about this, and you mentioned this, Sam, is the Home Office failures. Yeah. Home Office waiting list for asylum seekers went from 100,000 to 170,000. Mm. The real number is probably more than that, yeah. but that was the figure as of summer last year. The problem surely now is that the people who are here need to be put mm. somewhere, yeah. and somebody has to pay for that. And whether we pay for their houses or yeah. whether we pay for their... Um, you know, uh, asylum seeking. I think well, there's I 34 think we million. Hang on. I think I there's. Think... Well, I think that might be the answer. But, but the, money but the is... problem is at the moment, we have to, you know, they're here already. You're, and you're they actually, know right. very well that if they don't bother yeah. um, actually processing they'll the cases, stay. they'll just stay anyway. Do you think we, they can, they're putting their feet up? Or, yeah. They're putting their feet up in the offices and they're not in going the like, Meh. They're all at home. They're, they're 90% of the work. Well, that's what they say. The Home Office spend, which rose by 559 million in 2023, that's the crazy thing. Rwanda, Rwanda's a distraction. They can only process. Says 200 people. So yeah. it's nonsense. You look at the that figures that they have on sort of that sort yeah, of side. Yeah, forget about Rwanda. I'm going to ban the Crazy. word. Exactly. We're not saying it anymore because Rwanda's not the story. Yeah. The story yeah. is the people that are here yeah. who are going yeah. absolutely nowhere yeah. except they're now being moved out of hotels yes. into housing. I have no issue with an asylum seeker on a waiting list delivering my takeaways, to be completely honest. Well, you could, I well guess what? Fine. They already are. They, yeah. I mean, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone who turns up at your door. I mean, remember they rounded up 20 delivery drivers down in Brighton a few months ago and they were all illegal. And that's the problem. But you need to keep track of these things and yeah. also put the figures in perspective. They're talking about the Home Office spent eight million a day last year. Mm. And eight million a day, absolutely crazy. Right. There's a safety in certain things about giving people jobs. You do need a, a sort of net migration and so on and so forth to make sure certain jobs like care and so on and so forth are filled. Yeah. But we need to deal with this. The, the, the number is down though, what they're saying is the number is down by more than 56,000 at the end of September at the Department of Down. So there is some sort of progress. What we need to no, do though, the, the, the main sort of problem what is, is that. down though? The number of what? Well, the, what they're saying is the number, this is basically the, the uh, 20,000 fewer people staying in the accommodation than six months ago. So, so this where is have they gone? Well, the number that's of the question. people on the waiting well, list I mean, you know, they've just gone to some more accommodation. Well, they're, they're, so trying, they're, yeah. trying up, they're trying to put up these temporary houses. So I was down, as you know, I was down in Cam where they were talking about these temporary I houses. I you get that in some I, 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 all the time. <laughs> all the 
going to do with it. Probably on a holiday. It's going to go. Actually, actually, a proper question for you. Yes. Was how was Cannes? Because you know the south of France is an area which it, has it, it also is an area. An immigrant problem. And absolutely. And well, what did you see? One, one of the things that there was a Japanese company there which would talk about actually during earthquakes and things like that they set, uh, set up temporary accommodation. Yeah. Which is a fraction of the cost. But are they doing that in France? So, so that's what they're looking at. It's not down in Cannes. No. Surprise, surprise. They don't want to ruin the uh, the, also, the aesthetics. There's a difference and between the south of France and the south of England. And, well, that, 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 you, can live in a, you can live in a tent in Cannes, but you cannot live in a, can, a tent but, in Cannes. But Ken. the reality, Ken. these hotels, the reality, <laughs> the these hotels are different. far too expensive, so they're, they're putting up yeah. temporary but accommodation. Also, again, the whole system has been ruined from point one to, to point ten because, yes. I mean, the one I know about, North Eye, which is down in Bexhill, is a former um, army camp, right? Yes. Uh, it was taken over by Emirates Airlines for a while, used as a training base for their, for their uh, flight staff. They've now bought it, right? They've been leasing it in order to give it, uh, give, put, put something like a thousand migrants in it, right? But they bought it from the people that they were leasing it from. The people leased, who, who, who sold it to them, bought it for seven million, sold it to the home office for 15 million. Yeah. People are making Just money. Just throw money from, at it. People are making money from this, from selling this, from, yeah. from, from rent, but from rent. Another anything. government failure. Sure. And also, let's remember this this is taxpayer money. It's our hard earned yeah. money. And we currently have almost the highest tax burden since the Second World War. We are paying through the nose in taxes. Yeah. Where are we seeing it in public services? Where are we seeing it in government spending that is actually impacting real people? Yeah. And we're looking at the way in which asylum seekers have been treated, where they are forced to be reliant on other taxpayers. Yeah. No wonder why people resent them. And, and we should also look at the promises that were made. So Robert Jenrick, the former immigration officer, he said in October that they would be exiting 50 hotels by the end of January. Well, yeah. let's see if that happens. Well, but, that has, but James that has, Cleverly said <laughs> last Wednesday the process will continue until the last hotel is closed. So these are the promises. We need to continue to hold their feet yeah, to the fire. Yeah, but that doesn't help anyone delivered. because all it means is that they then move these people into communities who don't want That's them. That's what you need to do. Which and causes friction, causes difficulty. Yeah. And as as Reem says, if they're not working anywhere, yeah. exactly what are they doing yeah. all day? They can't, around. they can't process them quicker, quicker enough that more people come from behind. Well, and it's always the problem with the media because you're only ever reporting one side of it. So it's all about the numbers, but no, we do all solutions. sides of it here, Andrew. We, What's do. That? Yeah, we do all sides of it here. We, we, we do, thing. absolutely. The other absolutely. thing, of course, is this week was the week that the European Parliament decided to have a sort of EU-wide agreement, yes. which is still not really very sort of sure about how it's going to how it's going to work out. But they're talking about getting better plans to move, move yeah. people back to their country of origin as soon as they hit Europe, which yes. would be a big help. Because, mm. I mean, let's face it, it's a big European problem. Oh, it's absolutely. And, yeah. and you need collaboration right. absolutely to make but that work. But if they got deported as soon as they got to Italy yes. or as soon as they got to Spain or Greece, that would yeah. be a, a beginning. Mm. That yeah. would be a it, huge difference. It, it's totally that sort of, And this is going back to the solution, which you're brilliant at doing on this show. I am. And it's Thank always, always been that sort of, It is looking at all sides. But the reality is that's some of the solutions. You turn around and say, make, make sure it's not attractive right. to come here. Right. Make sure you target the people trying well, you know how you do that? Side. You know how you do that? You stop giving people free stuff. I'm yeah. so Welcome back. You're watching the Independent Republic of Mike Graham in one of the longest running news stories of all time. Julian Assange is back in the headlines after the first bit of progress since his extradition fears dating back to 2012. The Australian government has revealed that after all this time and so much effort wasted, the US federal government is considering dropping criminal charges against the WikiLeaks founder and that Mr Assange may be able to leave Belmarsh prison and return home to his native Australian. Australian? Australia, even. Uh, with me right now, the panel. They're back. <laughs> now, that was them all trying to salute at the same time, which <laughs> clearly didn't work they very well. They got jealous. Well, well, I, I, jealous. Back, I, jealous. I mean, this is the thing, right? You give one of them a salute yes. and then they all want it. They, they, Sam they, Dallas here, Reem Bibirim as well, Andrew Eborn, uh, welcome back. I mean, wouldn't it be pathetic? And it would be a sort of typical ending of this Julian Assange farce yes. for it all just to be now forgotten, to sort of fall limply over the edge of a cliff. And you go, oh, well, off you go. Back, uh, they've dropped a charge in Sweden. You know, they don't want him in America anymore. Just go back to Australia. Look, it, at the yeah, end of the day, like, I, I, saw a, I saw a movie the other day um, about the whistleblower in America who came out and said about how Trump, how, how the Russians had got involved in the Trump. It was a, it was a movie, Reality Man. Yes, that's that's right. yes. Yeah, and so so I think whistleblowing is a really important thing, especially if you know, especially if it you're is. in a scenario. So, 
hasn't even punished enough, is what I think. Well, his, I mean, his life has pretty much been it's ruined. As, again, you've got, as always, got to put it in perspective. It's 2010 yes. yeah, what exactly. happened, well, all the way back to that. It's like he's been in prison <laughs> since then. To be and, no, but, and he's been in parts of embassies and so on and so forth. It's been a horrible time and people are coming out about sort of and that sort of stuff. But it, enough already. You need to turn around. But also, there's got to be a balance because we need to depend on whistleblowers when terrible yes. things happen. And he exposed corruption. Let's yeah. be honest about this. With, with regard to the way in which the WikiLeaks scandal occurred, he exposed corruption and we shouldn't be punishing people that expose mm. the truth. Mm. I suppose not, but I mean, the argument from the American government side was that he did put quite a few people's lives in danger and, at the time. And I mean, what he did, he didn't do particularly, um, I would say, no. discriminately. You know, he just yeah. dumped a whole bunch mm. of thousands and yeah. thousands of documents. Um, and actually, in some ways, maybe that was good because very few people could be bothered to go through them all. Yeah. You know, but there were people whose lives were certainly put in danger yeah. and possibly were even killed. Oh, no, that, you, have to, you, have you have to put that into balance. You have, they'd have to make that yeah. case. But you have also to make have to imagine the mindset of someone who was there. You're, yeah. in a, you're in a scenario, you're in a massive conglomerate where you're so terrified and you think that something, something is wrong, mm. so wrong that you're prepared and he was to right. go to such lengths. And he was right. And he, and was he ended right. up being right. Yeah, exactly. but, but, but it's also important that you do have somebody who can hold the feet of those in the power mm. uh, to the fire. Of so course. What he, exposed the U what he exposed the US airstrikes in Baghdad, there were diplomatic cables and classified communication from the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. But you're right, Mike, is there were too much. Mm. And some of the people's lives were put at risk. Yes. And I think whilst whistleblowing is absolutely right where there's corruption and wrongdoing, other things you need to be a bit more selective. And it was just a dump. if governments were inherently corrupt, then we wouldn't need whistleblowers. And that's mm. the point. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, I blame the US government for putting those people at risk in the first place. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's not forget, an awful lot of the delay in his kind of processing was partly down to him. Yes. He went yeah. and sought sort of the solace of the Ecuadorian of Pamela Anderson. Uh, yeah, and Pamela Anderson. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> the strangest <laughs> twist of all, really. That's, and that's, that's a win. That's, that's, a, strange that's a win for any straight man, well, surely. Well. I used to say to the producers here, I said, the only reason I would ever do the Julian Assange story is if you get me Pamela Oh, there you go. <laughs> I don't <laughs> care otherwise. Uh, absolutely. But it was Chelsea <laughs> Manning. Uh, he got all the information from, from Chelsea Manning yeah. as well. And Chelsea Manning, remember, it was 2017, was released and pardoned by President Obama because originally Chelsea was, was uh, sentenced to 35 years in prison. Yeah. Mm. And looking at that sort they of They don't like, mess around in the US. No, it's, it's And huge. I think he's worried as well. He's going to try and get a pardon from Biden before Trump gets in. Because yes. Trump will because have Trump it over will, there. Yeah. No, but, yeah. no, but Trump already said, oh, I am WikiLeaks. He said that in one of his, one of his speeches. He obviously, of obviously because he doesn't know what he's talking about. Truth no. social. Like, Truth social. Yeah, he was, he was like, oh, I am WikiLeaks. That's why he said he was, I am Mr. Brexit as yeah. well. And Trump, just, Trump is also quite possibly one of the most corrupt politicians. Yeah, exactly. Trump is a so lovely like, man. Possibly, he speaks so highly quite, of you. Who do possibly. you look like? <laughs> he looks very good. I know what he's doing now. And, <laughs> that's, and that's an outrage for you to say that. And she's absolutely correct. He is, of course, one of the most corrupt politicians in the whole industry. Well, you say that, but yeah. you know, he hasn't been found guilty of anything corrupt. But, so, it, you know, 91 indictments, him. however. Yeah, and you know what an indictment is, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, it's not actually a conviction. Yeah. So. No. Once and you have to absolutely well, say that for legal reasons and other bits of Well, let's, um, let's, 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 talk, see what let's talk about smoking. Smoking, pounds, smoking rates have declined in this country. Of course. Not by banning smoking, but by people switching to safer, healthier products like vaping. Mm. Yeah. Vaping is more than 95% less harmful. We saw that from Cancer Research UK, Public Health England, various different studies. Well, it, it, now, de it depends on that. So, but some of those vapes are actually, they're, they're exploding people's faces, they're causing oh, all sorts of damage. Yeah, that's a rare one. That's a rare one. What illegal. was interesting, what, what are the chances of you riding an electric bike while vaping? <laughs> 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 Like, that's, that's, that's a bomb, that's a bomb yeah. on wheels. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now listen, um, that's enough about vaping. Let's yes. talk about the Chinese flooding the UK with fake stuff. Are awful, isn't it? But there are ways to spot them. Well, I don't them. know. How well, do you tell they're fake? They're, they're, you can tell they're fake. The, the perforations are not right. Right. If you, no, seriously right. If you have a look at it, the, the colouring is not quite right Where on, do you on get the stamps. Them anyway, though? Um, what happens, and some of the posters are, are, have been supplied by people online with, uh, with these mean, stamps. Why are the post office buying stamps well, online? No, because it's the little local post office person. Oh, they, they, they talk and, about and that sort of stuff. They lock them all up. And, and and it's, really, <laughs> it's, really, it's, really, it's really not the time for the post office to have well, even it, more it, back press. You know what I mean? And, all, and also, shock, shock horror, the chart. The ch the Chinese well, are, are they, they, the they say, fake, they say it's more fake, the, the trouble, Have you ever been to Timu or, uh, or Sheen? Yeah. It's fake everything. The, tr for, the, for trouble a, is this, the trouble is this, people are having to pay five quid to have their letters delivered now because people are using these fake stamps. In good faith. They, they don't think, yeah, they probably bought them online. Fair, I'm sorry, Chinese but you've got sort of to be a bit, no. bit thick. Yeah, you shouldn't be buying stamps yeah. online. You're right. You're running a post office. So that's the warning. That's the warning. Sorry, this is Royal Mail we're talking about. Don't buy the stamps online. That's the warning. 
It's exactly right. <laughs> but they, honestly, they, the Royal you Mail don't. The Royal Mail don't. Royal Mail don't know really their like their um, stamps from their elbows. To be fair, I mean, they're, luckily they're obviously... I don't ever send anything by I mean, post. who does by stamps? Also, who sends letters anymore? Snail, Snail mail. Snail mail. Well, Carrier well, pigeons that you could use. Yeah, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you who does though, because yes. I found this is an insidious development. If you get a parking fine. Uh, yes. From any of the councils in London. They all send yes. The only way you can you can you can appeal it is by sending a letter. Yeah. You can't appeal it online. You well, appeal it, um, wouldn't that be I'm delicious? So you send you a letter. Have, you have to send I will have to, I'll have to contest you there because I I do get quite a few parking fines. I've discussed, <laughs> I, I, I've, I've discussed it on your on your <laughs> show before, uh, but it is. But they. But have it, you ever appealed them? All, I've appealed every single one of them. I've got maybe half. Of, but you have to write like, a letter, though, don't you? Yeah, but you have. Or you can say it online, but then they will send you another letter. They will do it by by mail. Like it's like. It's like, well, bills. What, it's like what, council tax what, what, bills. What, what, I, what, I love, yes. what, what I love is that if you sent them a letter using one of the Moody stamps, they have to pay a fiver to receive it. <laughs> <laughs> so there'll be glorious, <laughs> well, glorious that. justice on that set of basis. Yeah, right. good. Now, you guys might not know about this story, but I've got to mention it to you. The Royal yes. Navy has got some new policies. Oh, I love that. Oh, we saw you, you don't need to swim. You don't need to be able to swim. I said, and, and, you can be, and you can join the fire brigade if you're, if you're scared of heights and you can, and you can become uh, and you can become a, a doctor, a surgeon if you, if you faint when you see the sight of blood. Well, I, All I of these things are new and it's a great policy. I don't think you should be allowed to do any, any kind of military service if you if can't. If you're afraid of water. No, if you can't yeah. swim. Not, yeah, I mean, I mean being... there used to be a 30-minute swim test. Yes. Day. Now, swimming for half an hour is quite good. It's yeah. quite hard to do, <laughs> yeah. I would imagine. But, I mean, if you're on a boat and you're in the Royal Navy... Yes. And the boat sinks and you can't swim. Yeah. Well, you're a liability. Well, aren't you yeah. putting everybody but else I mean, in danger? We can laugh about it, but isn't it really, really upsetting yes. that they, these are the people that are supposed to be defending our country? Yeah. Yeah. I, have to like, say, I have to say that the, the story does say that they, um, that they, that they did abolish that. However, yes. you would get into phase one and then you would, yeah. they, would teach it, it, you, exactly. they would teach you to swim in that yeah, phase one and, then, they, move, and then you would move forward. They're, yeah. they're really worried about recruitment. So what they're saying is we're going to let more people in. We're going to get more people in, but they have to be able to swim before they qualify. They get, only get to phase one, and what the, the, the objection so is, it's costing money. no longer need to take lessons in their own time before, before they apply. Up. Before yeah, they get, apply, you get it at work. They'll they'll teach you how to swim. But there's only before they what apply. What are your responsibilities at phase one? Are you at, are you actually what are you? What no, are you're you not. You're, you then get trained. So the, the the complaint is, it's going to cost lots of money to train them to swim. So basically, you're getting the non-swimmers uh, okay. later. That's how you can't, you know, can't be that is. many. It's not going to be a drain on, the, on no. you know, society. I, I mean, also, we have only got about two ships. It's not like we need. It's not like we need more reason to swim to then. Yeah, anyway. you can't, you can't, you can't. I've worked out what the problem is here. Guess who's in charge of the navy? Grant <laughs> Shaw. <Hey. laughs> yeah. my, my local MP. There you yeah. go. Oh. Did, who, who sent? Who sent us a little leaflet? Tory the, boy. He sent us a leaflet. Did a post the other day saying that even though he is. He is the Minister for Defence. He still cares about us. Of he does. Oh, he does. You know, and, he so does. I sent him an email saying about the potholes and he did not reply. And, and he, he again used the Moody stamp, so you had to pay a fiver for that yeah, as well. I so <laughs> so you work on that basis. Um, now, it says here there's a film based on the classic board game Monopoly. I love it. It's preparing to pass go. Margot Robbie's production. How can you make a film about Monopoly? Very simple. And she's going to have huh? the plot. So that, that I, was, I was in Cannes, did I tell you that? Yeah, um, we were, we were, <laughs> Tell us we were, again. We were talking about yeah, basically good parties, it? expanding oh, never mind about the about Did you go to any good parties? I, I, I had loads of parties. I was, I was, was, I was with Rick Astley last night. Were you staying were you, were you, were you stay in, stay in, stay in a tent on the beach with a refugee? I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't. But Margot Robbie, expanding the brand, that's what it's all about. So they did Barbie, about a billion dollars, right. fantastic stuff. Her production company is now doing the right it's a monopoly. Oh, I'm uh, and they're going to do the on that sort of basis. In love with Margot Robbie. Right, I think Margot Robbie. She, she speaks very highly no, of you. She's, she's the most beautiful woman. She on is this incredible. Planet. Yeah. However, the problem for me is that yes. Barbie you can make something of because you yes. know there's Ken, there's Barbie, make a silly film. Yes. How can you make something with Mr. Oh, very simple. Yeah, You've got there's, glorious there's, it's characters. A, it's a, fina I it's think, a it's I financial, think. it's financial peril. You know, they've got, they've got to have you know the, the, the top hat guy. The, yes, the little dog. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. Like, Margot Robbie is going to do what what she did for feminism for capitalism, and I'm all here for it. <laughs> well, I look forward to it, but it doesn't sound good to me. It doesn't sound like you're going to. I hope it's. Pro-capitalist. I hope it's pro-trade, well, sure it pro-business. Well, pro Hasbro, who are licensing the rights, they say it actually lends itself more to a story because you've got so many different characters well, involved. Well, it could be like a Wall Street. Kind of it could be like Absolutely. a Wall Street. You've got a Yale, you've got a Moscow. It's all yeah. about teaching people about uh, oh, property. And... For you. Do you know what the original Monopoly board actually was? Tell us. Come on, Andrew. I, I, re re I reckon it's probably about 1910. I no, reckon... but what was it actually of? Which city? Because oh, oh, oh I don't know. It wasn't London, was no. it? Was it New York? No. Where was it? Atlantic City. Atlantic City? Yes. 
For oh. some reason, it was an anti Now, of course, you can get all sorts of different forms of monopoly, which are actually quite ridiculous. You know, like they've got. It's um, really there's a, there's easy a, to There's choose. a RuPaul's Drag Race monopoly. Yeah, I'm sure there is. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there there is. Is. There's a monopoly you can get without any money, but it's yeah. only cash. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's socialist, you know, that is. Yeah, sort of I really. So, my, my, my hope Dig for this. Central digital currency monopoly. <laughs> CBDC. I really Chinese hope. Monopoly. Bitcoin, Bitcoin, yeah. Monopoly. Yeah. Bitcoin monopoly. Bitcoin monopoly. I really hope that this movie is a pro capitalist, pro entrepreneurship. Game and you know a lot. You know it won't be. It'll be I know it won't hell, be. Won't it's it? going to be woke. It'll be woke Robbie, isn't it? I, I do love Margot, but she is a bit of a, a lefty, wokey feminist. But but it was actually to, to your point. It was 120 years ago that it was first marketed. Left wing American feminist called Lizzie Maggie is what <laughs> in 1904 is what it did, and it was originally called the Landlord's Game. There you go, and that's why. And, and what oh, happened? So it was actually so, anti capitalist And the Great Depression is what suddenly made it go into monopoly. Of well, course. that was that, that's yeah, the whole thing, though. When you pay monopoly with your family, I mean, it was always it was always arguments. The biggest fight because. because that's the whole thing, but you don't you don't necessarily you, you don't necessarily but you don't necessarily go to somewhere and then suddenly you're stuck with this massive bill like oh like, that's not really like real life, is it? No, yeah, exactly but it's right. teaching children about money and how to take There's care of their it. money and investment. It's teaching people how to negotiate. Oh, I think it's the best thing. Good. My children will be playing Monopoly every time. Okay, well that's enough about Monopoly. Because the world of woke. Now, we haven't got a great deal of time left, guys, yeah. so we're going to have to look at uh, a couple of the papers. The Sun have got a very um, interesting front page headline. <laughs> They've got a picture of O.J. Simpson with a headline that says, Good Riddance. Very subtle. But this yep. is coming from Caitlyn Jenner, because one of the things that we were yes. talking about was that um, many of you, apart from Andrew, of course, will be too young to remember all this, yes. but, but, I mean, the Kardashians began yeah. in, uh, in the O.J. Simpson, yeah. And, of course, Kylie Jenner um, and the whole Jenner family were on the other side of the uh, of the room because yeah. they were sort of on the side because they were friends of, of his ex-wife That's mm. right. who he was accused of killing. So the whole sort of Kardashian Jenner thing was born. And it was extraordinary. During OJ Simpson. And it yeah. also made it incredibly popular. I mean it, it meant that the story was was mm. completely blasted all over social media. Right. And with people that generally speaking wouldn't have been as interested no. in in a, in a double homicide like this or in a, in a murder like a murder story like this. Well, there was no social and, media no social media back then. It was wall well, to wall was coverage, wasn't it? Wall to wall from the car was, chase uh, to the other should, pieces. There's a um, um, there's a there's something called there's a program called uh, the people versus OJ Simpson. I yes. think you've seen it with um, Cuba Gooding Jr. Yes. As, yes. as OJ when Simpson. he plays him, yeah, and it's and it, and it is excellent. It's it so because it just shows you, you're right. It's like you know if if they had social media at the time, it would have it would have blown sure. up. But it was. But, just Everyone putting it in perspective, 1995, yeah. he was acquitted of murder, uh, but 2008, he was sentenced to 33 years in prison on an unrelated well, charge. Well, clearly, Caitlin to do still with armed armed robbery and that robbery, sort of yeah. stuff. Caitlin still clearly holds, so holds, a, um, grudge, holds yeah. a grudge. Absolutely right. Speaking of holding a grudge, J.K. Rowling's holding one. <laughs> uh, oh, great brilliant. headline. It's J.K. Rowling in the Goblet of Iron. Uh, that's hilarious. That All credit to I love a good pun. I think she's absolutely right, though, than because Daniel Radcliffe, yeah. Emma Watson and Rupert Grint would be absolutely no one yes. without J.K. Oh, Rowling. Oh, I, well, I think not, it's despicable. That's, that's, so really that's despicable. not specifically true. They, they are not... That she, is, she was not the casting director she at Warner Brothers. Them. No, yeah, no, but no, she, she, she absolutely she made cre them. She created the characters, but she didn't cast them. So they don't really... Yeah, but without her writing... Hang on. They don't owe her anything. No, I'm not having that. Without her writing the book... Yes. Never made that's, the that's, that's the same as like saying that any every so Sam, every yeah, actor in Lord of the okay. Rings, Sam, let me, every let me actor in Lord of the Rings Sam, deserves like their their their, their career. So from just one, JK, just one thing, Sam. Is Tolkien. it right that J.K. Rowling, as the creator, is banned? From attending some of these uh, Harry Potter things. She's not banned. No, but they, they wouldn't let her turn up because of no, the no, 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 she was right? right? invited and she decided not to turn up herself. I, don't I, think, I think the, oh, yeah, point, okay. the point of this story is that J.K. Rowling herself has effectively tried to insist that women's rights should trump any sort of notion of uh, uh, different types of feelings that different types of people feel. And her co her, 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 the stars that starred in Harry Potter haven't yeah. defended her, haven't supported her. And that's well, they've attacked her. Yeah. They've done they've, 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 they've attacked her. So what, J what J.K. So, said is don't apologize to me jk rowling as in bowling that's how you pronounce the name but but, but don't apologize to me apologize to but the no women they're not but they're not, so going, but they're not going they're saying. not going to apologize to her because and they don't because they disagree with her and, and, disagree. and they're of course they're allowed, they and they're allowed they to disagree but with we, her. we believe in we believe in free speech and we believe yeah, in exactly. yes. and they're, they're all able to have different opinions the point is the cast review that was published this week by uh, dr hillary cass she's this report effectively has showed that actually in the united kingdom the issues that we're facing Within, within the NHS are effectively that children that are being prescribed these hormone blockers, yep. children that are being medicalised, sterilised as children mm. are actually not being benefited. Not, the intended effect it, isn't It's there. very dangerous ideology being, yeah. and work on that premise. They're being let down. Yep. And so J.K. Rowling... Rowling. You know, 
Rowling. Come here. You can say it any way you want. I can say it. I'm free speech. <laughs> Once again, this is an independent can, Republican yeah, Mike Graham. J.K. Rowling has actually come out and said, you know, They've, she's been defending human yeah, rights. But as, yeah, but as you and rights. I, as you and I spoke about in the yes. green room, the way she's gone about it is not necessarily. Yeah. And, and people and people are welcome. To, we, people people are welcome to disagree with the fact that she that she that she yeah. took ten people. She took she took um, you know journalists. She took people that are completely innocent. Put conflated them with Somebody with like sexual with, sec Willoughby exactly, and with, with and sexual predators racist. and said oh they're all men etc. I get what. But she again, was doing. she's allowed to do that. Of course she's yeah, allowed. Yeah. Of course she's allowed to do that. But also people like people like the people who've worked with her, like Daniel Radcliffe, etc., are allowed to say, no, we don't agree they with that. They can. But what has he done so since... Why should, uh, why should what's he done since Harry Potter? He's done loads of movies. Quite, quite, quite a no, lot. But absolutely <laughs> nothing that anybody cares about. Oh, Harry right. Potter <laughs> is what he knows. <laughs> is, you know, you taste. It's right, absolutely okay. true. Finally, uh, yes. one, for the, uh, one for the teenagers. Keir Starmer, Labour will hike UK defence spending amid threat from China and Russia. Yes, He's really he pushing will. the boat out now, isn't he, Keir well, Starmer? Well, He's gone from, you know, nuclear disarmament under old Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, to building up our defences. No, and, and, and as it's 2. always... 2.5% of GDP, which I think is really interesting that Sunak, you know, has failed to do that themselves. Somehow, uh, Starmer seems to think he's going to find the money in the budget. Yeah. Yeah. My question is, where is this money going to come from? Yeah. I, I'm, there I'm, is I'm no very money supportive. tree, this is what they said, isn't well, it? I'm well, very... Rishi, Rishi Sunak's uh, pandemic money tree, no. Yeah. Oh, no, I yeah, agree. I completely agree. To spare. No, but, but you know where that money came from, Sam? It came from money printing. Exactly. Yeah. That's why we saw double-digit inflation yeah. last yeah. year. Yeah. So right. I'd rather us not return to that to that kind of economic... He, he says now, Starmer says... This is, he changes his mind every week. This week, he says, Starmer says, defence is the number one issue for his government. Yes. I mean, I next week, it'll be something else. Flip, 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 flip. Anyway, let's just give the man a chance. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. Well, I'd rather not, but I think we're going to have to. Um, that's all you've got from me tonight. You've been watching the Independent Republic of Mike Graham. Thank you to all of you for arguing so well. Mike of the Week, back tomorrow night at 7, and he'll talk TV. <laughs>